Hello everybody and welcome. In this video, we're gonna talk about this Ford mobile connector that allows it to charge from either 120 volts AC or 240 volts AC. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see just how much power it draws from both 120 and 240 volts. Relative to yesterday's video where I looked at the shock flow here, and I looked at the electron, I said that they were worth 40 amps. I was incorrect. These units here are good for 48 amps per the manufacturer. All right, well, let's get to it. Let's plug this in, plug it into the truck and see just how much power is being used. For the 120 volt plug, I'm gonna be using something called a kill a watt. This is a power meter. It measures the amount of power drawn from 120 volts. So let's get this plugged in and let's just see how much power we're drawing. I have a 50 foot 20 amp 120 volt extension cord. And uh, this is it here. It uh, allows me to bring AC where I need it. So I'm gonna plug the kilowatt in. I'm gonna plug in the Ford mobile connector. This is the kilowatt, and as you can see, it's 121.2 volts AC. And uh, we will plug this into the Ford mobile connector now, and I'm going to run the cable up around and plug it into the truck. All right, let's have a look here at the battery status. We're at 81%. I have a maximum of 85%. Uh, so we should be able to plug this in and it should start drawing power. So let's have a look at that. We're now connected to the mobile connector. It is winking, which means it's charging the car. Let's see exactly what rate we have. 117.3 volts at the end of a 50 foot extension cord. Looks like the power factor is 0.9998, which means it's non-reactive, doesn't mean anything to you. Hertz, 59.9, pretty close to 60 Hertz, which is what we find here in North America. This is uh, what's called VA. It's a combination of volts and amps. It's kind of like watts. And here's the number of watts, uh, 1300 watts uh, is what we're drawing currently. And we're drawing 11.16 amps. So we drive over to Aunt Mabel's. I haven't seen her in a long time. And she says, you know, you can't leave. You're gonna have to spend the night because Aunt Mabel lives kind of out in the woods. And you say, sure, I'm tired. I don't need to do anything. So I'll stay the night. But the lightning needs a charge. What do you do? Here's what you do. You get out your mobile connector and you plug it into her wall outlet and you plug the J1772 into the side of your truck and it's going to charge. But hold the phone there. What happens if her electrical system where you've plugged this in is already got a refrigerator on it or it's already got some other loads using up part of the 15 amp circuit that you've plugged in? What do you do? Well, we know from looking at this, 1300 watts is being used. And more importantly, I'm using up 11.2 amps of current of the 15 amp service. Well, what do you do? Do you plug it in and then it pops the circuit breaker or blows the fuse? You know, Aunt Mabel lives in an old house. She probably has fuses in her fuse box. But anyway, the circuit goes dead. Now what do you do? Well, you gotta find a new circuit. Well, that may be okay if you have an extension cord. You got to keep an extension cord in the front along with the mobile connector, don't you? So now you finally find another outlet and you plug it in and hope that there's no other loads on that circuit to cause the breaker to blow again. But the question I have is, Ford, in my Tesla, I can go in and adjust the amount of current that the car draws. So no matter where I go, if Aunt Mabel's circuit is busy, I'll go ahead and reduce the amount of charge current into the car right on the screen, and I can do that. 
The Ford Lightning does not have that capability. We discussed that in yesterday's video. So I can go into the menu and look around, but I'm here to tell you they don't have that. So when you plug in this mobile connector, you need to make sure that it will give you at least 12 to 15 amps of power, and you must make sure that there's no other devices into the circuit. So anyway, that's something to pay attention to when you use your mobile connector when you're out on the road, all right? So now you know the power. All right, well, that is the 120-volt circuit. So we have the same problem when I plug it into 220. Do not try this at home. Yeah, it was the easiest way to uh, hook up to this. And uh, so this is a circuit breaker. It's a 50 amp breaker. It runs down here on this number six. Right here is a single phase, which means I can clamp my meter here or there. And this is the safest one. It's away from all of the high voltage stuff. Again, do not ever open your box. Any of that stuff in there will kill you deader than a hammer. Now, this circuit breaker here goes down here in the wall, comes out to this outlet. And guess what I have? I've got the mobile connector plugged in into 240 volts, 1450 outlet, all right? Same one that the charge point there above it is plugged into. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug the plug here, the J1772, into the Lightning. And our goal is to see how much current we're actually drawing. All right, I think it's happy. All right, so uh, let me get my ammeter. It's going to be a live thing, so you have to bear with me. This is a clamp-on ammeter. It's actually really good. It allows me to uh, measure both AC and DC current down to 10 milliamps. Today, uh, we're going to clamp it on to AC. All right, and then I can clamp it here, and we can read it, okay? This is reading in amps. Stabilized. So the Ford mobile connector draws 28.3 amps. And uh, if we multiply that out, we can figure out just uh, how much uh, power we got. And uh, that's what we're charging with now. And if we look over here, you can see that. I know the question you have coming uh, to mind is, um, does it slow down when it gets near the top? No, it does not. It's such low power, it stays constant power from zero to 100%. I have not died. I got the front cover of the panel back on. Let's analyze now exactly what we did. This is a what? Repeat after me, mobile connector. Is this a charger? No, it is a mobile connector, does not charge. The battery has its own charger built in to the battery. You give it AC, it converts it to DC and charges the battery. So we have a mobile connector. We have a what? 1450 plug for what voltage? Yeah, 240 volts AC, okay? This plugs into the mobile connector. This one. What is this? This is a North American plug for a 15 amp circuit or a 20 amp circuit, depending upon what kind of circuit you plug it into. It fits both. This one will probably plug into a 15 amp circuit as we know that the mobile connector draws 11.2 amps. What is a normal outlet? 124 volts at 15 amps. They do have 20 amp circuits, okay? But this will easily plug into a 15 amp circuit. And of course, it also plugs into the mobile connector. Yes, that's correct. And the mobile connector has a cord on it and it's hooked up to a, no, no, a J1772. Yes, that's what this connector is called. 
It looks like it's on better part of a 20 foot cable. Allows you to easily locate this someplace. And you're going to locate what? Yeah, that's right, a mobile connector. And plug it into the wall, and then you plug this into the side of your lightning. That's as difficult as it is. You do need to know a couple things, however. At 120 volts, this product needs 11 rounded up to 12 amps of power. So depending upon where you are and what circuit you plug it into a house, you got to make sure that that circuit's not powering a refrigerator or a rice maker or whatever, something that draws a lot of power to exceed the circuit breaker current. Otherwise, you'll plug this in and at 2 in the morning, your car will quit charging because it overloaded the thermal circuit breaker. Yes, that is how they work. So if you plug it into something, try to make sure the circuit you plug it into can handle the continuous 12 amps. Now, you got to be careful about extension cords. If you've seen my video, you should probably look it up on exactly what kind of extension cord to use and how you should use it and how many you should put in series, okay? So watch that video. I'll try to put a link down below. So now you have your mobile connector and your J1772 to plug into your truck. All right, you are now an expert on the mobile connector. That's correct. So we're going to be the big time guy. We have this NEMA 1450 and we're going to go and plug it into somebody's house, maybe yours, some an existing connection. However, in my travels, as you know, with my Tesla, I've been everywhere. I go to my buddy's house and I find ways to charge my car and they're very good to allow me to do that. All right, so what we're looking at is a veritable plethora of adapters. Some of them are store made or manufactured this way. Some of them are homemade. Now, I will caution you, if you are not an electrician, don't be making these things. You need to hire an electrician to make them or buy a pre-made one already set up to do it. But let me show you what I do when I travel. I've got my mobile connector, just like this Ford one in my Tesla, and I have my plug. So I wanted to make it universal to a NEMA 1450 like this. So I bought this adapter. Now, this adapter is one of the many plugs you'll find on a dryer outlet in a home. And in my daughter's place, she had this funky looking connection. Depending upon where you're going, and if you're gonna be there for a while, this adapter plugs into where the dryer is, and lo and behold, it has a female 1450. That means that your lightning connector will plug into this guy and make a circuit. So now I can plug my mobile connector here into this adapter and plug it into a dryer outlet, right? It's pretty cool, huh? So then uh, let's say that I go to another friend's house. Now, I've got relatively technical friends. A lot of them have welders, believe it or not. And, of course, a welder circuit is even yet different. They're, they're, like I say, there's a whole pile of these types of circuits uh, and these plugs. And depending upon what was used, you have to adapt to it. So this is my buddy in Ohio, Joe's welder output. I buy the uh, plug here. And I built up my own adapter. As you can see, look at that. It's a 1415 female. And then I built this one up. You know, I go to Wyoming a lot. And my buddy Greg has yet a different plug in his welder. And where does it go? Yes, sir, into a 1450. And I have this plug. This is a Loctal. This was at my buddy Lynn's house. He had a 30 amp Loctal. You stick it in, it's a twist lock, and you, you lock it. And look at that. It's got a 1450 output. So there you have it. I'm here to tell you that uh, do not make your own adapters unless you're an electrician. My suggestion is 
search on Amazon or wherever. A lot of these are available where you find trailers because trailers have funky looking plugs and they want it to a 1450 for a motor home. All right. Well, there you go. Let's talk about the power requirements now. This is a mobile connector. That's correct. It will run off 120 volts or 240 volts. What is the difference? Well, it goes from maybe 2 miles per hour with the 120 to maybe 18 miles per hour at 240 volts. Makes a big difference. It'll get you charged and down the road. So, there you have it. How many amps? Remember, 28.3 amps at 240 volts. Keep in mind, however, whatever you plug it into must have a continuous rating because the battery in this thing is 131 kilowatts. It probably take better part of at 240, probably 10 hours to get it from 20% to say 80 or maybe a little more. So it's essentially continuous duty. Always check with your electrician if you have any questions about electricity or the amount of circuits uh, needed and or the capacity of those circuits. Well, I hope this helps a little bit in understanding the mobile connector and how to use it in your Ford Lightning. By the way, the Tesla works almost exactly the same. All these adapters came from my Tesla. If you like today's video, give me a like, and if you would, please subscribe. You know, there's more Lightning stuff coming your way. Thanks for watching. I'll look for you in the next videos, and take care.